B-Link's back with a couple new mini PCs, and it's worth taking notice, since the B-Link Sur 8 was one of the best minis released in recent years. Thanks to its mix of good performance, cooling, and best-in-class noise levels, setting a bar that other brands haven't quite matched. The new additions are the B-Link Sur 9 and Sur 9 Pro. Minis with this naming scheme have already been released previously, but they're being reused for the latest CPU update because... reasons. I've been given the non-pro model for review, but both feature the same AMD Ryzen 7 H255 CPU, which is a refresh of the 8745HS, which is a refresh of... you know what, never mind. The crappily named Ryzen H255 has 8 Zen 4 cores, 16 threads, and on the iGPU side we have the popular Radeon 780M. What are the other differences between the pro and non-pro model of the new Sur 9s? Well, the pro has faster memory speed and comes with an inbuilt microphone and speakers. Both units come with a similar metal chassis which was originally released with a Sur 8 and was a nice improvement for B-Link in build quality and materials over their previous design efforts. While I couldn't find the new Sur 9 on their website just yet, it comes in at $479 US for the 32GB RAM, 1TB SSD model on Amazon.com, and the Pro is an extra $40. US Unfortunately, B-Link couldn't provide me with the Mate SE dock in time for this review, but I will cover it when it arrives. It's a dock that adds more storage slots and ports. I'll probably do a YouTube short on it, so subscribe for that if you're interested. Oh, and just a friendly reminder to please use my affiliate links in the video description if you plan to buy anything at all, as that's what keeps the sponsors off this channel and allows these in-depth reviews to happen. Included for the money is a large 19 volt 120 watt power brick, and I wish this had been switched with a nice compact GAN power supply we see more and more minis using. Apart from that, you get a HDMI cable. That's it. Ports remain unchanged from the Sur 8, and that includes a power button on the front, which has an off-center ring. That's uh, surprising, it passed QC. Anyway, next to it is a clear CMOS button, 3.5mm audio jack, and both USB ports are 10 gigabit, data only. Inside is an Intel AX200 Wi-Fi 6 for wireless and Bluetooth, same as in the Sur 8. On the back we have three USB Type-A ports, one being 10 gigabit, and the others USB 2. There's also a Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN jack, DisplayPort 1.4, up to 4K 240Hz, and a HDMI 2.1, also up to 4K 240Hz. There's another 3.5mm audio jack, and next to that is a USB 4 40 gigabit, which does support power and display. I tested it with my USB-C monitor, and it worked fine. Something B-Link hasn't changed are the horrible adhesive covers on the screws. Such a pain in the ass to remove. Once those are out, it's just four screws to get the cover off. Another two screws to remove the dust filter, and we're in. Underneath the nice large SSD heatsink, we have two M.2 Gen 4 X4 NVMe slots with a thermal pad ready for both. Nice. You may have already noticed there are no sodium RAM slots. Originally, I thought this Mini would come with DDR5-6400C sodium, but it's soldered LPDDR5X. Looking into it further, turns out the Ryzen H255 does not support higher speeds than 5600 mega transfers for DDR5. Still, I would have preferred the non-pro model to have DDR5 sodium slots for those of us that want the ability to replace or upgrade their RAM. The 6400 make a big difference over 5600 in the benchmarks? I'm curious to find out myself. The Sur 9 Pro model ups the RAM speed from 6400 to 7500 mega transfers. B-Link includes Windows 11 Pro, no malware or root kits found. However, what has changed is the inclusion of these pre-installed apps. We've now hit that era of mini PCs. Laptops and branded desktops have had junk pre-installed for years, as the brand usually gets a kickback. I mean, compensation from the app companies for the buyers having to put up with their software. So now is the perfect time for me to plug my how to reinstall Windows on a mini PC video so you can have a nice clean OS. Well, as clean as Windows gets. I'll link it at the end of the video. Oh, and Linux tested with the latest version of Ubuntu works fine. 
Alrighty then, on to the benchmarks. The Beelink Sir 9 performs as it should in single core Cinebench. Around the other minis forum H255 mini PC, and pretty close to the Sir 8 with the 8845HS. In multi-core, the minis forum beats it slightly at default, and does a bit better with performance mode enabled in the BIOS, while the Sir 9 doesn't really gain much. The previous Sir 8 model is also ahead. Geekbench Single Core gives the win to the B-Link Sir 8, but the Sir 9 is close to the Minis form. In Geekbench Multicore, there's very little difference between the Sir 9 and 8, with the Minis form getting the clear win. So the faster memory speed didn't help here. Not much changes with the H.264 CPU video encoding test, the Minis Forum wins out again. The differences are a bit more noticeable in the longer AV1 CPU encoding test. The Sir 8 also comes out ahead. Switching the same AV1 encode to the iGPU, and both the Sir 8 and Minis Forum do better. Faster memory speed did not make a difference here either. For Geekbench AI, I test both modes, but keep the best score, and the Sir 9 is just slightly behind the Minis Forum in the CPU test. In the AI GPU benchmark, B-Link Sir 9 beats the Minis Forum for the first time thanks to the faster memory. Usually faster RAM with iGPUs equals better performance in 3 d Mark's Firestrike GPU benchmark. But in this case, both the Sir 8 and Minis Forum do better. There's almost no difference between the three minis in TimeSpy. And finally, Steel Nomad. Surprise, no change either. So this B-Link Sir 9 performs a bit worse than the Sir 8 and Minis Forum AIX1, but in many cases, it's so small that it comes down to margin of error. For games, the Radeon 780M will hold you back in almost every scenario, but still a great bang for buck iGPU and holds up especially well for esports titles. Well, except Warzone. You'll need to use upscaling at this resolution and or drop the quality settings further. Many AAA games will run decently, but newer games struggle. The H255 is great as an emulation box, it lets you play many PS3 and Wii U games with better frame rates than the originals. This time I'm testing at 1440p for something different. Another option if you really want a game on this mini PC is to hook up an eGPU via the USB 4 port. Here I'm testing it with an RTX 4070 Super. The newest benchmark added is code compilation. In this case, Linux is used to compile the 6.15 kernel and interestingly, the Sir 9 gets beaten by the i9-13900HK tested previously. Although, the Intel chip used a lot more power to get there. Up to 25 extra watts. Adobe Photoshop performance is better than the Minis Forum, although not by much. And in Adobe Premiere, the Sir 9 has a clear victory. It's the second best score in performance mode. 3 Mark Storage Benchmark shows SSD performance to be below average overall. It tests a workload of copying and installing game files on the drive, and in this case, some Gen 3 drives beat it. The large heatsink we saw inside the Sir 9 for the SSD kept the drive cool even when thrashing it with Crystal Disk Mark while Cinebench was running in the background. Beelink Sir 8 had major issues with wireless and Bluetooth performance as detailed in that review. Bluetooth still isn't anything amazing with the Sir 9, but it is double the range of the Sir 8 tested, and better than the Minis Forum. What looks to have been fixed is the wireless range. At 12 meters or 39 feet using the 5G band, internet was unusable with the Sir 8, constantly dropping out with large latency spikes. Happy to report with the Sir 9 it stayed connected the whole time, and never showed a connection problem notification during a full Valorant game session. A big issue with the Sir 8 looks to be fixed. 
Idle power draw has gone up over the Sir 8. Both minis draw a lot of power at idle, and B-Link now takes the top 3 worst results. Maximum power draw depends on the power limit set in the BIOS. Out of the box, it'll max out at around 90 watts from the wall, while the higher power limit puts it at around 100 watts. The power limit also affects the CPU temp, with a maximum of 86C recorded out of the box and hitting 90C with a power increase. Interestingly, the temps are not as good as the Sir 8 unit reviewed previously. And the same goes for noise levels, although it does perform similarly to the Sir 9 with the Ryzen HX370. And let's not mince words here, B-Link takes 4 of the top 5 spots for lowest fan noise. The Geekom featuring the 7430U uses far less power, so it's not even a fair fight. That being said, the Mini's forum out of the box does just as well as the B-Link in performance mode. So, they're not too far behind. Many mini PCs with this power draw are around the 0.8 litre mark in volume, and the Sir 9 matches the Sir 8 before it. Mini PCs are definitely trending upwards in size, and moving away from the original compact Intel NUC design. Mashing the delete key gets you into the BIOS. In advanced AMD CBS UMC common options, you'll find the RAM settings. I tried increasing memory speed to 7000 mega transfers, and while it booted, Windows crashed pretty quickly. So no luck on this unit going higher by flicking that option. Tweaking the timings could possibly get it stable. In NBIO common options, you can set the VRAM limit. It's 4GB by default, which is fine for most scenarios. FCH has AC power loss options. SMU lets you set the power limit. It's 54 watts by default, 65 watts maximum. This is also one of the few minis that allows you to set TJ Max. It's set to 90C, which I'm comfortable with, and that's what was used for testing. But if you wanted a bit better performance at 65 watts before thermal throttling kicks in, you could set this to something like 95C or closer to 100, which gives more headroom. Backing out to advanced, hardware monitor has the fan settings. And that covers the BIOS. So that's the B-Link Sir 9 featuring AMD's Ryzen H255. It comes with the same nice metal case, still has class leading low noise levels and cooling to get there. The wireless issue looks to have been fixed. However, B-Link now needs to work on reducing the high idle power draw. Soldered memory allows faster speeds, but no replacement or upgradability. Bluetooth range could still be better, and the large power brick is an eyesore. The new Sir 9 is still a very good mini PC, but not quite as impressive the second time around, and a bit of one step forward and one step back. I think ditching the sodium RAM slots was a mistake, as I didn't see any improvement with the faster RAM speed. If B-Link also managed to reduce the idle power draw, give us a compact power supply, and stop with the adhesive feet, I'd have little to complain about. For most, these nitpicks won't be deal breakers, and wireless working will be seen as a big win. As for whether the Pro is worth an extra 40 US dollars, I would say no, unless you really want the microphone, speakers, or faster RAM. Judging by the Sir 9's results, it's unlikely to give you much of a performance boost. Either way, if you're interested in the Beeling Sir 9 or anything else, please check out my links in the video description and help a fellow mini PC enthusiast out. If you want an even more powerful mini PC with more cores and more GPU grunt, check out my review of the Beeling Sir 9, uh, the Ryzen HX370 model, which you can find right here. Cheers.